We are Sarva. The future of education starts here. Hello and welcome to this episode of Everyday Genius uh, by Simply Conscious. I'm your host for today's show, Pete Craig. And today it's my great pleasure to welcome to the show um, someone who's created out of, uh, out of a need that, that we'll discuss shortly, uh, but a social enterprise that has just grown and grown and yeah, has seen him now kind of like be featured in Time magazine and uh, you know, be appointed you know, to, to several amazing you know, kind of initiatives to try and further uh, further this cause. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to welcome uh, to the show tonight, uh, Jemiah Harkins. Um, Thank you. I, I, I guess what we could call you as an urban gardener. Is, uh, is that a good description? <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. Cool. cool. So, Hopefully soon enough the, uh, the title will expand into uh, to just general gardener to where everything I touch cultivates. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I just, before before we kind of like really dive in, I just want to kind of like share a little bit about um, how I came uh, across you in the first place. And yeah, this was purely purely, I guess, by accident. A friend shared an article with um, uh, with me about uh, about this guy that had created this this movement in uh, in LA, and it was uh, you know it was kind of like transforming uh, communities and bringing people together and. You know, solving you know, some of the some of the food crisis and and bringing kind of good healthy nutrition back into into people's lives, um, and it just struck a struck a real chord with me. And I thought, you know, that's someone who's um, who's living their purpose, who's found who's found something that they're passionate about. And so I reached out, and you know, you hadn't funnily enough, you hadn't even seen the article. So you know, that was <laughs> you know, that, that that was nice for you to see that someone else had written an article about you again. That's right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, and yeah, I think that's that's. Uh, and the more I've, the more we've kind of spoken, the more I've kind of found out about what it is that you do. The more fascinated I become with it, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, the more the more aware I become of how important you know, what it is that you're doing um, is in the world right now. Thank so, you. But but before we kind of like get into that, there's a couple of things, a couple of questions that I always love to ask at the beginning of these um, sure. these podcasts. And the first one is. Yeah, what's what's alive in you right now? Hmm. Alive in me right now is a fight. I have fight in me that is endless right now. It's a fight for what's right, the fight for nature, a fight for people's awareness and what they can access through nature. And it's gotta be an assertive motion, like an offensive movement because in a lot of ways we've been trained out of having a fight in us because of systems of complacency or convenience or because of systems of power that would prefer that. Mm. And so I've been able to accomplish a lot um, by approaching challenges as though I'm ready to fight them. Whereas half the challenges at that point don't seem that much of a challenge and the other half are defeatable. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, And so, you know, like moving on from that, I guess, what's, what's the universe inviting you to do more of? Yeah. Yeah. So, At the beginning of this journey, there came a point when I realized when I gave something to the universe, it would give it back to me in more than I would expect. Mm -hmm. Um, It would be in the form of, you know, food, like I give someone an orange and they're like, give me three lemons. And I say, oh, wow, that's great. But it also was in terms of my efforts and my time um, in terms of the focus and what I'm doing something in order to give or in order to take. How often am I doing something to give and how often am I getting a lot back? Um, So it's interesting because now recently the universe has turned around and I've been needing to ask it to give back to me (laughs) in terms of opportunity, finance, um, you know, scope, scale, uh, personnel, um, you know, depth of impact and permanence of impact. Like I've been needing to know that all that I've given is able to actually 
manifest. So I'm actually asking the universe to, to give me more so that what I'm doing and what we as a team are doing can propagate even more so. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about, about that later, but from what you've shared with me already, you know, that's, uh, that, that's already flooding back in. You know, you're, you're receiving confirmation of that on a, on a daily basis, it seems. <laughs> Uh, cool so so why don't you why don't you collect just uh, tell us a little bit about your your mission um yeah about collect crop swap la about um the origins of it you know what what drove you know the the start of it of course well uh many folks out there might have a child or you may already have children um some who don't yet you'll relate for yourself Imagine your parents in a city where they recognize infrastructures have limiting powers on their food and that the food is the one thing going into your body every day, three times a day um, in some form or another. And they might feel like a little helpless or, you know, out of, out of control in that situation. So that's how I was when my daughter came along. She's two and a half years old now. Um, she's, beautiful, brilliant little baby that speaks five languages already wow. because I'm, we're speaking English, Spanish, Portuguese. Uh, my mom taught her sign language and she's learning Mandarin from her school online. Wow. So like this beautiful baby is so brilliant. I just couldn't bring myself to give her food that I knew was bad. Like I knew how bad um, most of the food is. And we're not going to call it food. We're going to call it pesticide food. And then we're going to call organic food food. Yeah. Because organic food is simply something that doesn't have pesticides or GMOs involved in how they're made and therefore won't uh, affect your body in a bad way. That said, that wasn't good enough. I read a book called Beyond Organic by Dr. Jana Boggs out of Hawaii. And it talks about how you grow food for the purpose of your body's nutrition grow a carrot so that it has the right nutritious qualities in it therefore your body gets what it needs as opposed to the reverse situation in most situations we go out to the store get whatever we see available and it ends up not being really what we need so i decided to grow my own garden and what you see behind me is uh part of what i've put together it's three or four rows of vegetables fruits uh everything from carrots to uh, grapes, artichokes, sunflowers, bananas, anything you can think of, wow. um, anything I can fit in there. And I love that she comes out here to eat it. She'll grab a green bean and chomp it along. She knows how to harvest it and is not afraid of bees or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that true connectivity to nature is what has started now Crop Swap LA. And what we're aiming to do is basically give this to everyone across LA and the world. Uh, we have started a monthly crop swap that turned into a farmer's market. And now we are aiming to take front yards of people's homes and convert those into market gardens that are designed to sell that food in the market, employing locals nearby and creating a system of sustainability of food that is nutrient grown. Wow, that's amazing, yeah. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, I, and I love what you say about, you know, this idea that, um, you know, we, sh we should be growing food, you know, for, for the nutrients that, you know, that our body needs. I think that's, that's so important. And, you know, people have, I, th I think in today's society, you know, food is just so readily available in the, in the supermarkets that it's almost become just a, just a commodity. Yeah, it's almost that there's no thought given to, um, there's no, no thought given to what, it's, what it can actually do for us and how it, uh, how it provides for for us as um, uh, for for us from an energy perspective, from a you know from a life perspective. Right, right, and you know, <clears throat> a lot of us, I think, in our lineage, our grandparents had that knowledge just intuitively. But mm. then there were systems put in place due to wartime, due to Great Depression, due to circumstances, and we allowed ourselves to depend upon those systems in yeah. the wrong ways. Um, so, so yeah, certainly I think, you know, coming back around, um, now with the COVID situation, our organization's gotten more important. Um, and now we're looked at as an organization to really help address the food crisis. And we're really excited about that. 
For sure, for sure. And how's how's this? Yeah. So from a from a community perspective, yeah. Like how how has this all been? Yeah. Like yeah, received. Yeah. What's uh, what's it done to the to like local community? Because I know when you first when you first started, you you like started by just putting a message out there on the, on next door, just saying, hey, yeah, has anyone got any spare? Yeah, garden equipment, any spare seeds, and yeah, I think you were you were quite overwhelmed by the response that you got. Yeah, that's right. I got a lot of stuff. I mean, a lot of interest, and just people seemed like they wanted to be doing the same stuff I was anyway. Um, I at the time didn't have like a close friend circle, so I was like, well, let me see if this is gonna harvest some friends. I'll make mm-hmm. some some local friends nearby. It won't harm me, and I like neighbors anyway. I tend to be a neighbor man. My dad was the kind of man who. Um, who would help anyone down the street carry a, a, an injured child home or, um, you know, help someone fix their roof if they're in trouble. Uh, so yeah, I've learned from, from that community example and it has created, you know, an awareness that there, there wants to be more of that. Um, I have a sign out front for crop swap LA. We leave fruit out there and ask anyone to take what they wish. And it's fun to see them, excited to grab extra fruit, uh, taking selfies with the sign and just feeling like they can contribute to something. A lot of folks too, if they have extra, you know, fruit in their backyards for their own trees, uh, they call us over to harvest that. Uh, so they feel like they're giving something. Uh, we give it to organizations that are like serving recently homeless folks or organizations that serve single families, um, single parent families, those that are veterans and it allows a kind of cohesion like a like a nature driven web of support you know yeah yeah and mm-hmm. i think i think again you yeah, that's that's something that's uh that in most society um most western society for sure you yeah, know that's that's been lost a little bit you know we've kind of lost our connection yeah i know for sure in you know, in my in my street it's it's very rare for me to see see any of the neighbors you know, we, we perhaps acknowledge people in the car as we drive past, but I, I couldn't tell you their names. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, that's, that's a really sad situation that we just don't know that. I remember as a, as a kid growing up. Yeah. 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 I, I, I knew probably you know, two, three blocks yeah, either side yeah, uh, and all around. Yeah. I knew the names of all of the kids and all of the parents yeah, in that, in that area. Um, yeah. But, but over the years, you know, that's just been lost. Yeah, so I think yeah. that, that community aspect is so important as well to what you're doing. So this is kind of multi-layered. Um, mm-hmm. It's not, it's not even just, you're not even just having an impact with the food. You're having an impact with, with the community on a much wider, on a wider scale. That's right. And you know, it's created a kind of uh, peace on our street. I have to say when we first moved here before the sign went up, before we started giving fruit away and felt like we were doing this, uh, there was a, coldness natural individualism is what i hear that you described Mm. and really the individualism is in the food context at at the very least useful to the businesses and leaders in charge because folks are individually dependent upon one system but in the crop swap world (laughs) where everyone's growing a little bit of something where it's a cultural conversation to exchange and kind of get to know each other over and where you feel like you're giving something and getting something, there's something re-energizing about that exchange on the, on the physical that is beyond individualism. It's now a cohesive frequency. It's a unit of people who are on the same vein, food. You know, I remember the first crop swap There was all kinds of people, race, age, um, class, and, you know, outfits. I I think there was someone that was recently homeless or was homeless there. And I was like, this is cool. Um, Everybody seems to be on the same level. Like, I don't know any other scene. I I can't go to a church like that. (laughs) You know, I can't go to a a school like that, university. I can't do anything in this society where literally it just leveled the playing field. It was no longer the physical world it was it was all intertwined with nature yeah yeah that, that's beautiful how, how important how important do you think that that piece is you know this this connection back with um you know with earth with nature mm, yeah well it's it's 
when food is removed from nature, it's not really alive anymore. And therefore, we're consuming death too and not living, or at least spending our spiritual energy on our body when we didn't need to. Um, I think it's a... <laughs> In LA, like, there's no reason people shouldn't be doing this. Mm. It's what they call the zone 10B. Uh, it's the uh, uh, hardiness zone, which tells you what you can grow during certain year. Well, here it's all year round. You can literally do anything. And we can basically supplement by using nature's abundance to other locations that don't have this convenience. Um, it could be, you know, an even exchange. They ship water in if we need it. We ship food out if they need it. Yeah. Um, but in truth, you know, part of our movement is also about water retention. So truth, truly, we're just you know, leveraging nature to create solutions to economy, creating green jobs for people that are low income, new to the country, uh, single parent families or uh, veteran families. We can create green jobs for those who are elderly, those who don't want to go to college because maybe that doesn't make sense anymore. You know, um, I want to create green jobs for those who are recently incarcerated uh, so that they know that they can rehabilitate and re-give to society while, while not being feared for doing something really fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, you know, nature is able to do that. Nature is able to protect us. In the case of a situation where we have an earthquake in the next 10 seconds, there are five entryways to this whole LA area that could be shut up um, and that would take at least six months to be reopened. So six months of scrounging for food, man, this city is going to go in fires and flames. So really this solution for Crop Swap LA and what we're trying to do is a sustainability necessity when you think about city planning. Um, I know there's some cities that have leveraged nature and its abundance effectively, like uh, Toronto has. Um, I think Ontario's done a great job, and New York's made some. New York City's made some smart building code moves. But truly, you know, we have an opportunity in LA to take so many front yards and just make food. Let's do it. Let's do it sinfully, you know. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's do it so much that they're like, why do they make that much food? Um, because we can and we should and there's a there's a need elsewhere so nature gives mm. us that yeah that's beautiful i was speaking to someone this morning and uh he's uh he's got an ngo that works with uh, uh works with indigenous tribes in in the dc in the sierra in um in colombia and oh. it, they uh they're, they're basically planting kind of food forests um and this was it, they, they started off just planting trees and then the uh, uh, the like, indigenous tribes came back and said, "No, you know that's that's not enough. What you need to do is, is collect plant um, food forests, so as there's fruit that's grown, yeah. And then the uh, then the people that live in the area can pick the fruits and eat the fruits, so they can they can live. Uh, but then the fruits that aren't picked can like drop into the soil and and quite re re fertilize the soil. So as we've got this collect like, you know, this this permaculture that's being created then." Yeah, I think that's just that's so, so, so relevant to, you know, to kind of what you're talking about here, you know, that essentially this is, you're, you're creating kind of like, yeah, um, garden food forests. Yes, exactly. And the, ethno the ethnocentric nature of that story and ours is really the center of our story. Because when humans are involved with the plants and the plants improve the human situation, there's synchronicity in the universe mm. uh, because there's the universe, there's earth, there's man, there's plants and animals, and we can at least connect the two. We've been the, we've been the disconnect between all of that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> plants and plants. absolutely. So um, yeah, that ethno ethnocentric nature of it, if we can keep that as the focus, then we know we're heading in the right direction. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Um, what's, um, this, this is quite clearly, Clearly now your your passion. Um, do you, do you believe this is your your collect purpose? Do you do you believe that this is something you've found now that is your collect? I guess your, your zone of your zone of genius, uh, your your <laughs> playground, your playground, your place to to create. 
<laughs> it is for now. And actually, I have to say it's opening up many more where I think I need to be too. Mm. Um, I think uh, there came a point where I had to accept myself as a leader and that I couldn't hide in a, in a room. I couldn't, you know, say something softly and gently and be effective. I needed to be exactly as leader as I know I am. Um, and I've just recently stepped into accepting myself. So anyone out there, when you, when you know you are a leader, um, everyone else around there has known it your whole damn life and they've been waiting for you. And now yeah. Once you step up into the spotlight, finally that validation of like, okay, you're leading us in the right direction or, you know, it's, it's benefiting us and you continually feed back and continue to benefit those people. If that's the thing that makes you feel good, then that's where you need to lead. Um, like lately, um, I've joined the, uh, the city of LA, Mayor Garcetti's uh, New Green Deal uh, committee, his advisory board, essentially to help uh, advise on a toolkit that they want to give to all the residents on how they can get started to grow easily. Okay. Um, and so I'll be advising on that for South LA. And I want to use the platform and any other platform to raise true awareness about what the food industry has done and what we can do to just protect ourselves and make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, it's more about you know, harvesting nature and its opportunities, its economic opportunities for residents and growing food and selling that in the markets with us, um, using our app to now use what we're calling crop boxes to grow anything that you want here and sell it to anyone in town and have it delivered. Yeah. Wow. Um, we're going to, we're going to do that. Um, to restaurants, you know, they can say, does anyone want to grow jalapenos for us? And we'll put it in a crop box order. Someone will grow it and it'll be an order routine forever. So we want to make sure that, you know, a new infrastructure is set into a place to where people can support themselves by nature and nature can support them. So, so there's a, there's a like, you know, because by, by its nature and from what you've said, you know, this started as just a, um, a kind of like a swap of giving and receiving. Um, is there, is there a commercial side to this as well that, um, that allows people to actually, you, know, you, you started talking about, you know, kind of restaurants placing, placing orders. Um, so I guess that's where the commerciality can come in and people will start to earn an income from, from doing this as well. Yeah, there's a, there are various verticals we are already working on. So on that vein, uh, if you are a resident with a front yard, we can actually farm your front yard and give you a percentage of the revenue of everything we sell ongoing uh, so that's one way to earn yeah. money second way if you just want to garden yourself then grow a whole lot of lettuce and on the crop swap app you can use a crop box order tell everyone what you're growing when it's ready and how much you'll have they can pre pre subscribe to you to your box to have it delivered once it's prepared um, oh. and then another way uh, if you're in an apartment we're gonna start uh, manufacturing what we're calling aqua beds and aqua beds are these aquaponic uh, tanks with fish that on the top have a tray and on the tray grow the plants so the fish water cycles continuously there's no loss of water there's an automatic fish feeder you don't even got to worry about feeding the fish <laughs> and wow. um, the food grows actually twice the rate as regular in soil so you have plenty of strawberries crawling out of the corners and just enjoy that in a small living space. No need to have soil at home. Um, so we're going to have installing those for, for lease to buy. So you can purchase for really cheap and just keep it. Um, and then we're also doing, you know, shirts, mugs, bags, some merch, things like that. Um, we do some garden installations. Just depends. I have a partner who works on that. And rainwater harvest installations through another partner that works on that. So uh, we want to make sure that we're right at the center of showing people you have everything that you need at home, just really cheap to get started. And then once the food is growing, our, our job is to prepare that manufacture, can, brand, make all kinds of products from it. Those that are herbal and good for your body, but those that are preserved and long lasting. Um, we'll also be supplying others through an international food co-op that I'm part of. Um, and so once we get enough food growing, that'll be a part of the exchange. Uh, and it's nice because this is actually, you know, CropSwap LA is part of a larger organization now. 
Uh, we're I part was, of Cross Country. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was just I was just going to come on to that because I yeah you know, that you know when uh, when we when we last spoke you know that was something that had, that had only recently happened. So yeah, I mean uh, talk talk about that a little bit because I know you had aspirations yeah. to to grow this and yeah, this is one of those examples I think of. You, know, you you said at the beginning you're 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 actually um, you're asking the universe and you're asking life you know, to give something back to you right now. And I think this is one of the biggest yeah. gifts that you could possibly have had. So yeah, I, uh, just, just tell us, tell us a little bit about what's, what's happened there. It's so true. So I called it crop swap LA and it turns out there also exists crop swap incorporated that has crop swap, New York, crop swap, Miami, and soon crop swap, Australia. So they have uh, a wide worldwide perspective investor base and they believe in the vision that I have here in LA and how we're gonna, gonna run things. And so we are working together. Um, PropSwap LA has merged with it and we are uh, sharing resources, time, experience, and all kinds of worldwide ambition <laughs> to, yeah. to just make sure people have the option to do what we're doing here. <laughs> and and you, you now, like, you're now part of the board of that, uh, of that company? Yeah. Oh, yeah, amazing. that's right. That'll, that'll, be, that'll be announced later on but it's happening, yeah. <laughs> which is important because, thank you, because I I'm, I'm want to, to show that you can grow something and retain, you know, investment of time, effort, money, and, and, and grow something that's positive. This is a social enterprise, everybody, not a nonprofit. It's about, you know, growing something that creates long-lasting equity because it is valuable. Now, when mm -hmm. value is taken away from food, we find ourselves back in the same situation where someone says, oh, we'll just do it, make a factory of food. They'll eat it anyway, and yeah. then value is removed. So we have to make sure that those that are doing this get paid. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, so, <laughs> and so now, so now this is this is definitely something that you want to kind of expand and roll out, yeah, across across the world. That's right. Yeah, our plan is to open up more crop swap locations uh, to create more of a hype and find local leaders and local organizations to keep that going. Um, I would love to travel around and introduce myself, use whatever platform I build to create hype at the time. Um, <laughs> and, you know, we, we believe this is urgent in some areas, in fact, um, where, you know, certain governmental policies have tighter restrictions on food and, you know, the rights to be called organic or, or the rights to label yourself as not organic. So some folks have have more what we want to call, you know, a food slavery situation. It's not quite food uh, desert, not quite food inequity, not anything. It's, it's when you don't have a choice. And sometimes, sometimes you don't know you don't have a choice. So we're here to awaken those minds as well. Um, it's about informing folks about how they can grow. Uh, we'll have educational contents that's coming out. Um, I believe we're working on a documentary pretty soon, which is really thrilling and, and humbling. Um, but uh, the whole experience has been humbling, truly, because I'm doing what I love. I love plants. Mm. <laughs> I, would, I would say I'm going to be a botanist when I retire, and I got to thinking, why do I have to wait? I got to just get into uh, plants now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, so I, I, I know, you know when, we, when we talked, you, know, you, you wanted to talk a little bit about yes, you know, kind of like just some of some of your practices, yeah, as a, as an individual, um, you know, and and things that have, have that have helped you. So yeah, let's uh, let's let's dive into that a little bit because I think that's yeah you know, for for everyone that I everyone that I talk to um, on this show, yeah, you know, there's always there's always something, you know, there's a connection you know, to um, to something else. There's a whether it's a practice, whether it's a um, yeah, yeah a connection to uh, to consciousness, you know, whatever mm. you, you kind of want to describe it, there's, there's, there's something that I find that's, that's intrinsic to unlocking this, uh, this mm. genius, this, this kind of flow, you know, that, that you seem to have got into and that, that many of, uh, many of my, you know, my guests have, have got into, um, mm. Gay Hendrick, Gay Hendricks, I interviewed the other, um, the other week. So the author of the big leap and the joy of genius and conscious loving and, a yeah, 40 years in, in, in the space, 35 books or something he's written. Um, yeah, and he, he talks about you know, this idea that, um, you know, we, we all have, all have yeah, a genius. Um, mm -hmm. and that, that genius is that space where we just know, 
that what we're doing is the right thing and you know every moment and you know once we find it once we identify it you know that our our purpose then is to try and increase the percentage of time that we're spending in that in that zone <laughs> yeah so as we're we're actually spending yeah. all of our time in that because then you know, things just get created and you know we we live a much happier much more fulfilled your know, life and i think you know, for for you as a father of a young daughter i think that's that's really important that you you talked about leadership earlier but you can demonstrate leadership just by by being and uh, by being in flow and letting them <coughs> see you know how just by being in your joy and by following your passion you know you can you can create you know kind of beauty and you can create magnificent magnificence and you can create wealth even Yes, that's a great, that's a great sequence. And you're so right about that. And living that example, sometimes we need to live that example for ourselves. Also, mm-hmm. that was, that was my transition. I had this daughter looking at me saying, why are you unhappy doing the job you have? Why are you unhappy X, Y, Z? Why aren't you out there in the plants? You know, like she knew for some reason before that point, I couldn't look at myself and admit that I needed to just not being in office. Like Mm -hmm. I'd been a stock trader in Chicago. I traded stocks, bonds, futures, options, mutual funds. And I knew that world, but I also hated being in an office, no matter what we talked about. I could, (laughs) I could be talking about a circus, but if I'm in an office, just the scene and the setting is not my spirit. (laughs) And so, uh, so learning that about myself, but then accepting it. Um, I, I do practice Taoism and uh, I only got into Taoism as kind of an idea of accepting myself for who I was. It was just the easiest thought philosophy I'd come across where no matter how I was, I could accept myself. Um, And the more that I studied and kind of what they call practiced Taoism, Mm -hmm. um, the more I practiced it, I learned that was only the first step. Because once you've accepted yourself, <laughs> then you've got some things to work on. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not, um, you know, the, the whole concept is around balance and equal parts. So even that work on yourself ends up being work that's hard mm. and work that's fun. Um, or like work that's slow and work that was actually pretty quick. Yeah. Um, and so that flexibility of accepting myself in nature and then narrowing in on something that ended up being okay either way, that was just a great way to grow. <laughs> like I, it's shown in the spirit, mind and body in the spirit. I, I know exactly like how I am and accept myself and don't try to fit into spiritual spaces that don't make sense to me. Uh, Physically, I, one example is physically I've grown my hair out. And for, and for any black men that are listening that happen to also have worked in professional scenes and, and, you know, anyone that might want, honestly, anyone that might want locks, uh, it's hard to have that in a professional scene. And so I decided it's who I am. It's naturally doing this thing anyway. <laughs> Anywhere in the world, it doesn't like my physical expression. I don't need to be, you know, it was that easy. Yeah. Taoism gave me the, the nature explanation, the option to exist and to be accepted and the option to improve and, and adapt as I chose. Um, mm-hmm. And then in terms of the mind, it, by practicing Taoism, it relaxes the mind. It gives the mind a reason not to try, not to wonder or try to figure out. It tells us that, you know, whether it's that I'm successful in this gardening movement beyond this point or not, it wouldn't matter. Um, What it says is that Success is as dangerous as failure is because both are on precarious platforms and neither of them are settled. So don't be as enthusiastic about success when in truth, it, it could end tomorrow. It could have ended 
during our call there could be a tweet i don't know <laughs> i'm not that famous but you know it's just uh it's it's just you know by staying in that mindset allows me to, it allows me to fail it allows me to not put a lot of weight on things that don't go well it allows me to not put a lot of weight on things that do and worry too much on it when i'm neglecting something new um it's uh you know and it's allowed me to you know it's allowed me to make some mistakes in this movement i'm not i'm not uh shy to say like you know you know um i had to ask i've ha i've had to choose who's involved in my movement and who's not yeah and you know that's just something that is a uh, a ramification of my practice of taoism when there are spiritual conflicts and then it becomes you know manifested in the material world it's like i don't think that that's going to work with my movement so um in, in anyone's movement, in your own personal movement, like your movement through earth, through the universe. I don't move that way, right? Like I don't flow that way, Yeah. you know? Um, so taking quick notes of how I was, how it was manifesting in the physical world, allow me to make those decisions without remorse. Yeah. And they've turned out to be great, great choices. Yeah, I think there's a there's a few things there. I mean, just just on that last note, you know, this is this is about awareness. Yeah, it's a, it's mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it's about acceptance and awareness. So acceptance of you of who you are, and then awareness mm -hmm. of how uh, interactions with other people um, impact mm -hmm. on who you are. Yeah, and then yeah. and then having the the kind of strength to be able to um, to be able to kind of extricate those people from mm -hmm. you know, from an environment because. Yeah, I mean, really what you're doing is something, something similar to what we're doing with Simply Conscious, which is you're creating, um, you're creating a, a container, you're creating a, um, an energetic frequency um, that you operate at and that you know, all of this is being birthed from and, and is growing from. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if you bring someone into that who's, who's not at that same level, who's not you call it vibrating at the same, at the same level, yeah, then that, that puts that kind of off um off color kilter and it's uh, it changes that dynamic yeah and it can take it off off purpose exactly and if i didn't care enough about the movement or what i was doing then i could be like okay fine mm. but it's really important to me that you know what we were doing keeps going um in fact i'd say it's more important than i am like i i'm leading it now but um i'm just one body right now and i hope that anyone that believes in what we're doing feels equally responsible to keep this going <laughs> literally um because uh it's just bigger than any one of us and bigger than any team any time yeah i, I, th I think yeah absolutely i think that's that's the thing you know this is th th there's a time there's a time that's come where in in many sectors you know the time is to it needs leaders to step up and and lead but without without having to have control and without, without having to have, you know, um, you know like ownership, you know, or, you know, like, uh, ultimate ownership. Yeah. This is about, exactly. this is about leading by example, um, bringing people along and then just, just being able to collect, um, meld into the, into the kind of background, into the crowd and, and let that, let that continue on. You know, so, so your true leadership is, is being able to lead by example, but then also kind of knowing when to step back and and let that momentum carry on and i think that's that's what you're you're describing i think that's what you're starting to do quite quite beautifully thank um, you the other thing i just wanted to pick up on is that you know, when you talked about you know uh, the Taoism, one of the things i noticed was that it's essentially what um what it's teaching you know, is that there is no right or wrong you know we're brought up in this in this society where you know there's a duality and you're either right or you're wrong um, or things are you know, black or they're white or you know, they're, they're good or they're bad. Yeah. And the reality is um, they're all of those things. Life is all of those things. You can't, you know, we all have good in us. We all have bad in us. We all, and it's about accepting that um, and, and being comfortable with that. You know, we try to hide those sides of us that we think aren't acceptable to society when actually we should embrace them because they're just reflections of um, another, another element of us that we have mm -hmm. to, you know, and once we come to terms with it, yeah, then they don't become good or bad. They just become, mm -hmm. they just become. 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You're exactly right. Yeah. It's, and it makes you, it makes it okay to address those challenges all of a sudden, mm. you know? Um, I can think of all kinds of terrible things people might feel they have inside them. And a lot of times they're viewed as bad. Um, but, you know, if they weren't viewed as bad, maybe they could be dug into a little more. You kind of figure out really it's just that one thing or that one perception I had had, which doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. You know, I'm above the whole thing now, you know, yeah. people can just dig into it. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. How do you, how do you see this filtering down? So, you know, you're on, you're on the collect, yeah, the mayor's collect advisory committee now. Yeah. How do you see this filtering through into, because uh, movements, movements like yours, um, need uh, they need longevity um yeah and it and it's great for you know for for us as like adults to be moving that forward um but actually the future is is with the children uh the future is with the next generation yeah so mm -hmm. how, how do you how do you ensure that you know what you're creating now kind of filters through and is uh is adopted by um you know, by by that next generation so it's actually rather than yeah, them growing up um, and just treating food yeah, in the same way that perhaps we've we've grown up to, um, or we've we've been led led down uh, you know a certain path. How, how do you ensure that this is continued on? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, we do have some educational programs with a local foundation called Saving the West Foundation, and once things kick up again, uh, we plan to launch those again. But you know really it happens to be in the house it has to be in the house they'll learn right away if there's a garden on site they'll want to play into it so we're hoping to put enough gardens around la and just make them so ubiquitous that kids won't be able to feel like like without them um there's also a significant air quality improvement uh we'll achieve eight whole percentage points of our un development goal uh air quality improvement uh, for elimination of greenhouse gases by installing uh, gardens in front yards. I think about one in eight garden would achieve an 8% gain on that goal. So we can achieve like international standard goals. Uh, we can achieve city level goals, uh, state level, and just within the family, like all the units, all the fractal kind of figures of, of achievement. Also it extends through to other social goals. Um, and with kids. So diabetes is a big issue with kids. That's the reason that, <clears throat> that kids go to doctors for most reasons. And diabetes is becoming uh, even more prominent. And all that is, is overeating of sugar. Like they're eating garbage. Yeah. So if we, you know, really want to get at all these health concerns, if we actually do want to, like, I'm not talking about we healthcare companies, because I'm not talking about them, that we have a different incentive. Uh, I'm talking about we, the people, want to get to the healthcare issues, then uh, we need to uh, build, build gardens, feed kids the right kinds of fructose and sugar that come from natural foods, and they'll, they'll reject the garbage by the time they're teenagers. Mm -hmm. They won't understand why anyone outside LA would ever eat it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, think, I think that's, that's so important. I think, uh, yeah, you, you're, you're right. If, if you can put the gardens into the, into the households, yeah, then the kid, kids' very nature, yeah, you know, is to they're they're far more connected um, until they until they get until they get older until they get you know uh, conditioned. Yeah, you know, they're far more connected with nature than you know, the, than we are. And I think you're right. You know, just just by putting them into putting gardens into homes and you know, uh, encouraging kids to do exactly like you said your your daughter's doing. You know, coming out and and picking the fruit, harvesting the fruits and not being afraid of you know the color kind of the bees the dragonflies the you know the wasps whatever it is that's that are out there and just accepting them as part of um you know, part of you know earth and part of you know, our um uh, our ecosystem yeah i think i think yeah. yeah you're absolutely right that's it almost needs no no education because they they just they live into it yes yes they live into it and they live into it the whole life so Yes, out here playing, but then what she takes from here goes to the kitchen. So she's talking about it and she cuts it up, you know, she's eating it. Then later on, 
even at two and a half, she already has the cognizance to ask me, could you grow oatmeal? And I said, you know, I think I can grow oatmeal. (laughs) So she's already figured out the whole cycle and has the, the independence, like the natural willingness, like the, the entitlement that nature gives us all. Mm -hmm. She's entitled by nature to grow anything she can imagine. And she's only two and a half. So like we should be entitled to grow our medicine, our shoes, whatever it takes to make shoes, grow that, you know, (laughs) just anything, our clothes. Um, And uh, (laughs) so like, that's the kind of confidence that I want to instill in her, her whole life. I'm glad that nature, my, my experience with this can start it off because now I'm like, man, I want her to feel like she can use nature any way she wishes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. Um, and I, th- I think you're absolutely right. I think, you know, um, yeah, f- food is, food is our medicine. If it's, if it's the right food, yeah, then yeah, we can eliminate so many like you know, illnesses, modern day illnesses that, that just didn't exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, 50 years ago, a hundred years ago. Uh, because people were eating from from the land directly from the land rather than to collect this the, uh, a lot of the processed food that uh, that we eat now uh, it certainly seems to be a man made <laughs> a man made issue yeah on top of that so not only are we eating less from the land but the land is now a lot less nutritious mm. than it used to be yeah we've farmed and farmed and farmed and farmed such that now over 70% of the nutritional value that used to be there has been depleted over 70 years. Wow. So now the fields are either contaminated with pesticides or depleted with over farming. So LA has really got to step up and other places that are looking to re-enrich the soil and not be participating in like large scale farming operations that are subsidized by the government. Oftentimes that's the reason why the fields get depleted because the government has the money to pay the farmers to farm just one thing according to its schedule, its business schedule, not necessarily according to what the land needs or what would be most productive even. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, uh, and and again, yeah, maybe there's a, there's an element as well of when you just talk about that, it's almost like the the food we eat is, is being controlled because they're being, they're being, farmers are being encouraged to just grow one type of one type of crop instead of actually thinking about okay so what's what's the right thing to grow at this time of year what's the the right thing to grow in this environment yeah in this particular location of the of the world yeah and actually growing that and 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 cycling in the way that you know it it would have years and years ago yeah i mean even those farmers their hands are tied they feel like they wish they could do it the right way too and uh you know oftentimes their hands are tied by the cost of machinery and maintaining that machinery. Um, I think, you know, it's a similar system of, you know, if you have like an iPhone two versus three, like the cases don't fit. So you got to get the right stuff for each one. It's the same way with those tractors. If just like one screw is off, you got to get the, you got to go travel to go get that screw and that tractor is heavy and expensive to move. So I've seen documentaries and I understand how that whole system is just like designed to contract and control. So what nature actually provides is designed to expand and to share. And so that's what, you know, we plan to do, expand and share. Nature doesn't even permit control. It's weird when something's controlled. Like a perfect example that I can show you, just if you can see, that is, a, that is an artichoke, that giant thing right there. Yeah, yeah. And I planted it with just like two or three little seeds and it's expanding and sharing in multiple ways. Each of the heads that are on top of those have hundreds or thousands of seeds within them. There's no reason why any one company should be able to patent that, control its distribution, name it, charge anything for it. You know, I mean, charge for the service and delivery, but like the thing is free. So like, I, I, I can't allow like this food system is just a little bit off. No one really likes it. I don't yeah. even think the people who run it like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they like it. So I'm just going to relieve everyone of that. Like let's, let's throw off the blame. Let's just fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, what would, um, yeah. What if, 
what what words of wisdom have you got to you know to our to our kind audience to our listeners that you want to share oh my goodness trust yourself trust yourself you are so wise and you is a consistent string of your ancestors informing mm. you so you're not alone in that decision um yeah so like there's a reason to trust yourself uh <clears throat> when you do you find that life is blissful um the decisions that worked out or don't didn't matter mm. <laughs> yeah um, yeah listen to your ancestors i know that that's yeah, yeah a lot of us <laughs> you know um i find that when i get little hints or little little indications they they tend to be the right moves um yeah so yeah it, listen it, to your ancestors. <laughs> cool it, it, yeah it, it comes back to that awareness thing doesn't it you know once once you're kind of like tuned in yeah then you you start to see these these kind of like signs yeah, one of one of my good friends kind of like talks about them being kind of like breadcrumbs that the universe is leaving mm. for him. Yeah, and it's kind of like, you know learning to follow the breadcrumbs and, and see what uh, see what comes. Uh, yeah, um, breadcrumbs are always returning you to your source in that e sense. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, um, it, this this has been amazing, uh, Jemiah. Thank you so much for kind of like sharing. Um, if if anyone's interested in you know, like learning more about you know, what it is that you do, learning more about crop swap, learning more about the initiatives, you know, perhaps even wants to um, wants to some tips on on starting something up in their own in their own backyard, yeah, how do, how can they get in contact with you and, and find a bit more? Oh yeah, the best way is on Instagram. We have all of our announcements and cool videos. We just put out a really cool commercial that is making people laugh out loud i'm not yeah. even kidding i'm just like looking i've seen it six or seven times myself um so on instagram i am black super dad and the movement is la crop swap cool awesome <laughs> awesome well yeah um again thank you so much it's been an absolute pleasure i know we yeah i feel like yeah i could i could talk for uh, for hours with you about this stuff and uh, and just kind of go deep on a lot of things but yeah, I'm, I want to be respectful of, of your time and I want to make sure that the listeners get the most out of this and then like, get in touch with you if they feel called uh, called to this. So thank you absolutely. so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I look forward to like, seeing uh, CropSwap um, expanding across the world. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Fantastic. We are Sarva. The future of education starts here.